Hello, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Nuggets of Truth. Today, we want to tackle the question, is it possible for a nation to be born in a day? So first of all, we need to define what a nation or what a country is. So let us look to Webster's New World Dictionary, and I quote, a stable, historically developed community of people with a territory, economic life, distinctive culture, and language in common. Two, the people of a territory united under a single government country. End of quote. According to Webster's New World Dictionary, a nation is a community of people with a territory who is stable and historically developed. They must have an economic life as well as a distinctive culture and language. Therefore, with these requirements, it is impossible for a community of people to become a nation in one day. Now, let us consider the prophecy of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 7 through 9. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came upon her, she delivered a son. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a land be born in one day? Shall a nation be brought forth in one moment? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the point of birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I, who cause to bring forth, shut the womb, says your God? Verse 7 is a metaphor for verse 8. It is speaking of a nation, the nation of Israel. It's speaking about a land, as, as the verse says. Verse 8 confirms that it is not speaking about a person. It is speaking about a land. In specific, it's speaking about the nation of Israel. It is by no means speaking about a real person. I understand that some hold to the teaching that it is prophesying that the Virgin Mary would not and did not have birth pain, but that is not the case. Look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. If Revelation chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 is about Mary and we compare it to Isaiah, then it would contradict Isaiah since the pregnant woman in Revelation chapter 12 was crying out with birth pains and with the agony of giving birth. Not only this, but Mary did not give birth to a nation. She gave birth to the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of God. Now, back to Isaiah chapter 66. It is clear that Isaiah is prophesying the return of the Israelites to their own homeland after being dispersed for a very long time. While Isaiah was prophesying restoration, mind you, the Jews were still inhabited, or they still inhabited their homeland of Judea. They were still under their own monarchy. Besides that, the territory was not known as Palestine, but Judea. So in order for Isaiah's prophecy to be fulfilled, it must be fulfilled in combination with Ezekiel's prophecy and also Isaiah's own prophecy. See, the southern kingdom did fall to Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians in 586 BC, but the Jews remained in Babylon until they were liberated by King Cyrus of the Medo-Persian Empire around 538 BC. They were not dispersed throughout the entire world or throughout many nations. So to make this a little bit clearer, let us look at both Ezekiel's prophecy and Isaiah's prophecy. First, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 21 through 22. Then say to them, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will take the people of Israel from the nations among which they have gone and will gather them from all around and bring them to their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel. 
and one king shall be king over them all, and they shall be no longer two nations, and no longer divided into two kingdoms. This was also in concert with Isaiah's prophecy, which I mentioned a little earlier. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 4 through 6. Because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you, I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west, I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Both Isaiah and Ezekiel prophesied that God will bring his people back from all over the world, everywhere that they went, everywhere that they had put down roots. He will bring them back to their own homeland. Besides that, Israel did not become a nation, a sovereign nation at that time. They remained under the government of the Persians, then under the government of the Greeks, and then under Roman rule. So it is to the rule of Rome that we must now look. In AD 70, Jerusalem was attacked because they had rebelled against Rome. The walls were broken down, the temple was destroyed, but the Jews apparently were not dispersed throughout the whole world. Then in 132 AD, the Jews revolted again against Emperor Hadrian and the Romans in a revolt known as the Bar Kokhba Revolt. Hadrian was so provoked with the Jews that he wanted to completely destroy the very memory of the Jews and Judea from the books of history that he renamed the territory Palestine. Before that, it was known as Canaan. Then Israel invaded Canaan, took over that territory, and renamed it Israel. So at this time, 132 AD, it was that the majority of the Jews was dispersed throughout the whole of the nations. They had lost all identification with their homeland. Why? Because the temple was destroyed. They were forbidden to practice Jewish religious rituals, Judaism. The land was renamed Palestine. They were dispersed throughout the whole world, the entire world. And this remained the situation for 2,000 years. But throughout all of that time, the Jewish people never severed. Never did they lose their ties to the land of Judea, their homeland, their culture, their language, and their religious practices, and their beliefs stayed intact. Wherever they were driven, wherever they went, wherever they put down roots, they never lost one bit of their culture throughout the whole world that they had gone. And this is the main reason God has chose Abram, because he would teach his offspring the things of God. They, his offspring, in turn would follow suit like their forefather Abraham did and pass down their religious beliefs, pass down their culture, pass down their practices from generation to generation according to Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Then in 1948, the United Nations decision reversed 2,000 years of homelessness and wondering for the Jews. Prior to May the 14th, 1948, there was a British mandate that limited the migration of Jews to the Holy Land. Their purchase of land was also limited. They were not allowed to buy any more land. And their influence in a territory could not grow. All of this was changed. All of this was reversed when the state of Israel was proclaimed a sovereign nation and the territory was once again renamed Israel. Incidentally, Isaiah's prophecy was fulfilled approximately 1,948 years after the Messiah was born, which is the same number of years after creation that Abraham was born. According to the number of years set by the Bible for each person's lifespan, starting with 
Adam, all the way to the birth of Abram, later known as Abraham, when those years are all calculated, it sets Abraham's birth year at 1948, the same year that Israel became a nation again. It was at this time that the Jewish people began to return to Israel by the thousands and tens of thousands. The infrastructure just seemed to miraculously absorb the influx of Jews to the newly established nation of Israel. Israel was born in a day without the birth pains of war or battle in order to fight for their freedom. They did not have to fight a rebellion. They did not have to fight for, for their freedom. There was no fear of treason if they had failed in war. On the contrary, the Lord used the ruling power of the UN to bring forth the nation of Israel in a single day before the birth pains even hit. Israel became a nation. We can be sure this isn't the New Jerusalem coming forth out of heaven in the future because the New Jerusalem is not a nation. It is the bride of the Lamb, the camp of the saints, and a holy city according to Revelation chapter 20 verse 9 through 10 and Revelation 21 verse 9 through 27. So let me just summarize all of this for you. During the writing of Isaiah and Ezekiel, the Jews were still under their own monarchy, with their own temple, with their own religious beliefs, and with their own culture. But in B.C. 586, the Babylonians captured Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, broke down the walls, and took the Jews into captivity, which is known as the Babylonian captivity. Then under King Cyrus of the Persian Empire, they were allowed to go home and rebuild both the temple and the wall, under some duress, mind you. But nonetheless, they were allowed to build the wall and build their temple. Then in AD 70, after a revolt against the Roman rule or against the Roman Empire, the temple was destroyed. The walls was once again broken down the Jews would rebel against Emperor Hadrian in 132 AD, and he would completely devastate both the Jews and Jerusalem and rename Judea to Palestine. Isaiah prophesied that a nation would be born in one day, as well as that God would gather his people from the four points, north, south, east, and west. Then, Somewhere around a hundred years later, Ezekiel prophesied pretty much the same thing, that God would bring his people back from the four corners of the earth. Well, on the 14th day of May, 1948, the United Nations, largely driven by Britain and in many regards by the United States, declared Israel a nation again, and on the 13th, they were not a nation, but on the 14th, they raised their national flag as a sovereign nation to the disgust of their five surrounding neighbors who attacked them on the 15th of May, 1948. The very next day, they were attacked. But Israel came out the victor because God fought for Israel. Israel did not have to go through the pains of filling out an application to become an independent nation with the UN. No one had to give up sovereign territory in order for her to get back her homeland, nor did they endure the hardships of a lengthy debate and vote for them to become a nation. All other nations had to go through either a lengthy application or a lengthy war of independence. Israel, on the other hand, did not go through these types of birth pains. But it happened to them as God had said, as God had prophesied. I will do this in a day. It is his doing and none could have prevented it. That is what Isaiah was prophesying when he claimed no birth pains, no labor pains. Not that Mary would not have labor pains, but that Israel would not have to suffer the usual pains of birth in a nation. 
It was all agreed on and signed off on by the world's ruling body, the United Nations. I hope this video has shed some light on why it is Israel that Isaiah prophesied about and not Mary or any other nations for that matter. It was Israel and Israel alone. If you like this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.